that would be right. What can we take from shamanism if we were to think about, well, I know it already is making its way into into the kind of Western context with neo-shamanism, but um, like what are some of the lessons we can learn and how we can, and the tools we can use and bring to our cultural context? Well, there are, there are a number. First, <clears throat> first one we've been talking about is that exposing ourselves to these different traditions and cultures opens our minds up. That alone is, <laughs> can be healthy. I think a very practical thing for uh, we can uh, open to in shamanism is the recognition that it's possible to have very deep and meaningful experiences and altered states of consciousness very rapidly through very simple techniques, such as a combination of listening to rhythmic music, being in a in a group setting, uh, movement, dance. Now we've rediscovered that in significant ways over time. That's That's been known for a long time, but what hasn't been known is that we can then use those states that come from rhythm and dancing and fasting to induce uh, beneficial therapeutic healing experiences and insights. So, you know, you can not only go to a rave, uh, for example, you can, in, you can have those same kind of uh, uh, very moving, powerful experiences and direct them towards healing and helping others, for example. So there are potentials in these commonly used practices, such as music, rhythm, dancing, that, that uh, uh, not so widely recognized as yet. Yeah, and, and one of the areas that kind of brings a lot of those together that you talk about is uh, ritual. And I was thinking about how we still have rituals in our modern culture, but they seem less intentional. And, you know, maybe that's contributing to this kind of loneliness crisis, but it just seems like we have less um, bonding rituals. Yeah, I think I think that's a very important point, Liam. And it was one of the things which struck me as I wrote the book you're talking about, The World of Shamanism, you know, which put out in a couple of editions. So I spent several years writing and rewriting that book. And uh, you know, over that time of creating the world of shamanism, it really, uh, one of the, that was one of the things that struck me is the power of ritual. I realized I had underestimated how powerful ritual is. And, uh, and yet there be, can be something very potent about uh, about using particular sets and settings and communities and ritualized ways of coming together and interacting that have their own power and that build up over time. And, and particularly if you add in additional elements such as maybe some of the listeners have done, a, for example, been guests at an American Indian sweat lodge. Well, you know, and I, in my naivete, thought I was going in for something like a nice sauna. Well, boy, did I ever get that wrong. I had no idea how powerful it was to be in the dark, in intense heat and steam, with a group of people who were sharing their deepest aspirations and prayers and going through ritual, listening to drumming. I mean, it just blew me out of the water to find out how incredibly powerful it was to be with people sharing their deepest hopes and fears, aspirations and prayers. And in a setting where there was some sensory deprivation on the one hand, there was intense heat, so one's defenses were kind of melted away. And it just, it was a mind and heart opening experience way beyond anything I'd estimated. And I, just realized I'd been incredibly naive about the power of rituals.